Been at it already, had my tarot read Things are looking up for me, that's what my tarot said Been pumping out pheromones and wearing red Young Jerry Lollery King, but they're not aware of it Anyways, um, this, is a, this is an important podcast This, this is, is a huge, actually this is a huge podcast Because people wouldn't understand, they've probably seen bullshit banter They've seen some stuff of us on the internet um, They've probably seen you on the internet, if not, they're seeing you now But, um, this is a huge thing, we know it to be a big thing I think this is a big thing, but you waited for me to hit like a million on Instagram to ask me to come on your pod. No, it's not about that. Like it's, you were like, oh, now she has like a little bit of like following. Okay, sh- we can bring no, her we've on. Been t- we've been talking about doing it for time, <laughs> but it is actually like the timing of this now is actually for sure interesting. And I I heard you on your, I think I was watching your Snapchat, which I love Snapchat, by the way. I love Snapchat. Ever. It's the best shit ever. <laughs> Snapchat, you guys are the best. We love Snapchat. <laughs> on the planet. Snapchat is the best. So anyways. It's we have life a changing, one it, could say. It is life changing. Snapchat, thank you so much. We love you. You get the best app on the planet. Everyone I put go Brad follow on. my Snapchat. You did. You did. It's amazing. But we're gonna talk about putting people on in a second. Oh. Here. Um, because this is what it's, this is interesting. So you were saying that did you so it's been a year since you've been on social media. Dude, I literally it popped up in my memories. I signed to Raw Gear la- end of last March. So I've been with Raw Gear for literally a little bit over a year. Okay, so it, so it has been literally just over a year that you've been on social media. Yeah. So this is crazy, because uh, you just hit a million on Instagram. You started so you happy. started kind of blowing up on on YouTube now recently. Thanks yeah. to the clips. Shout out Bessa Bradley Mars. <laughs> um, <laughs> yo, that's the best clip channel in the game. It is. He's really good. He's great. He's good. Uh, it's pretty much best of Sarah at this point, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's good because it's helping. It's it's dope. Anyways, I don't care. But the thing that's interesting about this is I found you like a year and a half, basically a year and a couple months ago, and you had, <clears throat> you, you must have had a thousand, thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred followers. It was like my homies from high school, you know, like it was, it was a thousand yeah. followers. And I think I, I don't know if I posted something or you were like, you want, you, you might've slid in my DMs and said like, let's work out or like you respond. What was the, what was the, we got to give the backstory <laughs> okay, about how we the met. The backstory. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I remember you posted something like oh i wanted like a gym date or something it was yeah. something along the lines of right, like right. you were sad another like another couple was working out or whatever and i was like oh like here's my application to work out yes. with you okay. and i sent like pictures of me working out whatever and then you were like yeah and honestly i've like all of my homies would talk about zoo culture and i wanted to go so bad but at the time i was working like a minimum wage job yeah and for me to pay sixty dollars for a day pass was like well, it wasn't sixty back then. Oh, well, whatever it was, I was like, f- and I'm cheap. I was like, yo, I have to work four hours for this to like even out. Like maybe if I just DM him, he'll let me pull up. Yeah. So <laughs> she DMs me. I find her DM randomly because I get so many. I probably found your DM because I literally get DM by a hundred percent only dudes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, one chick. I clicked on it. I was shitting myself when it said Bradley Martin replied. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, and I was and I was basically like, yeah, come work out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You were like, pull up. You come work out again. And I, cause I remember looking at your profile and I'm like, right away. I was like, oh, this chick's in, in actually like really good shape. Number one. Cause I saw a picture of you in, you had like a floaty on and then you were like in the water. <laughs> yeah. Can't and, swim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, whoa, she got really good abs. I was like, she's in shape. Yeah. So I saw, and then I looked at like a few of like your highlight things. And this is just me being like a social media weirdo. And I'm like looking at this and I'm like, clicking it i'm like damn she's like these like pull up she's like actually good at working out she's actually in shape and then i'm looking at it i'm thinking like <clears throat> before you ever showed up yeah i was like i wonder why this chick doesn't do more social media stuff in the fitness space because like she could be like one of those girls that's in shape and you were already in shape obviously yeah. but i remember thinking like this whole you know we i guess i call her muscle mommies now i don't know what the word is thank now, you but, brad that's the but, nicest thing you've said to me yeah yeah yeah. but these girls are becoming way more trendy so i'm looking at her and i'm like she could totally do this i swear to god before you ever showed up so then you show up and i start talking to you and i'm like wow and i'm gonna make you feel i'm not you know i'm not trying to blow her head is massive right now she just hit a million followers on instagram but and i started talking to i'm like wow she has, she has a really good personality and that's when i was like this shit could blow the fuck up I, and I knew it. Like, I swear before you literally had a, like 1300 followers. I was like, she can blow up my social media easy. After I spent that, that like workout time with you. Cause I was like, your personality was so like natural. 
Thank you. And so I'm proud of you. I just want to say before we get into the rest of this, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. No, it that conversation did literally probably change my life. Because I remember you were like, Sarah, like, who do you expect to see your fitness content if you're just posting it on your story? Like, that won't reach people. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess he has a point. So I went home literally that night, made a reel of me doing pull-ups. And it did, like, good. I yeah. think it, like, hit explore. It got more reach than just my following. And I was like, oh, this is kind of easy. Maybe I should do more of these. Yeah. Why, why didn't you post more? Like, what? Because I remember I asked you and you were like, no, I want to go to school. I want to like, you know, I want to graduate. I wanna, I'm like, you're, you're like, I don't want to. Because I remember your initial response when I first brought it up was like, I don't really want to do the social media stuff. Like straight up. Yeah. Like, where, what, what was that about? Because now it's like a million followers. You got like hundreds of thousands on YouTube. You're on TikTok. You're everywhere. And you have a whole living now. I just want to give like preface before the beginning of the rest of the conversation. But like now you make good money doing all this in a year's time. Yeah, it was definitely life changing. But so, yeah, why did you not want to do it before? At first, I was honestly scared. I was scared to post. Like, I was like, you know, if I post it on my highlights, it'll disappear in 25, 24 hours, 25, 24 hours. That's all that people will see. They can't like keep judging me for it. They can only judge me for uh -huh. it for 24 hours. You just that's, worried about judgment. Yeah, that's what I was scared of. I was like, especially because my following at the time was only kids I went to high school with. I see them all the time at the local gym, whatever it may be like. I was scared that it was like cringy or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I'd just throw a few up on the like Instagram story and then. Call so you it were a you day. were just concerned that like, fucking Timmy from fucking whatever class was gonna be like you're stupid. Yeah. Why? Well, but like, why did you care about that? I don't know. And usually I don't care what people think. Yeah. But I was thinking if I post on my actual feed, it's just gonna occupy their timeline with bullshit and they're gonna unfollow me that so you cared me. about them unfollowing I, you or just like i was like if anything i'll lose followers from posting fitness content dude it's crazy it's crazy because this is really the opposite though yeah so now that you've done it over all this time um what did you like do you still have the same relationship to because obviously people talk shit about you now and you know that yeah you know but you also like get a lot of love so do you does it change your perception on like why you like would you go back and like do it all over again or would you not do it again would you like do I it differently honest, honestly i wouldn't do anything differently i think the way i went about it thanks to your help i think if i would have done it alone like with because you did guide me whether it was like telling me do it like this or like reels are really good on instagram or you need to make it this way make the first half second super enticing so they watch the whole video yeah. whatever it may be that you've told me like i needed to know that because i didn't have any friends that were doing social media i didn't have anything like that but there are keys to social media like it's not as easy as just throwing up a picture and calling it a day yeah you have to be strategic about it there's logic behind it yeah i think so yeah. it's not com complicated like strategies or logic but it's things you need to know for sure i mean that's 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 it is it, that's the thing about social media and we'll talk about this too is like i think people have this perception that it's just easy and you just post pictures it's not yeah, yeah. I, i'm not comp I mean, it's not like rocket science but it's also not like that simple either yeah but it does require a lot of consistency i think consistency is the most important thing like because for example i've i've done social media now for like a million years i'm like because i'm like 100 years old but yeah true. i've literally been on instagram for damn near 12 years and instagram is the kind of platform that i know specifically and all these platforms now that if you're not constantly posting content like you're literally not growing it's not gonna favor you yeah yeah it's give you zero like it's like every week you're not posting it's like you're you're getting less and less reach of what you could get and once you're getting that high reach you need to ride the wave yeah like this past like few weeks for me has been really good really Shout good best of bradley martin on uh, instagram and uh, no on instagram I'm fuck, you. fuck you but on instagram it's been really good so i've been just trying to ride the wave like i woke yeah. up this morning at nine and the first thing i did was post a picture yeah i saw it you don't like my pictures we just, have beef what wait what because i do like you your do, shit don't even cap he, you don't like my shit ever damn you might once in a while if it's like yo rock your drop live in three hours you might be like, <laughs> like yeah well when you're I wearing a stupid so. ass gym shark thing i'm not liking it okay let's be honest <laughs> i'm gonna be honest about it. just kidding i can't <laughs> okay. i don't want to disrespect gym shark no i know but okay even my lifestyle pictures sometimes i take pictures when i'm not wearing gym well, shark or ugly in those. i just look ugly i'm just okay, like i can't noted. like this mm-hmm like, if I liked it, I'd like it. Damn. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, if you liked it, you'd like it. I, okay. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, I'm totally no, it's fine. kidding. I get it. Your, your content's great, honestly. 
Well, yeah, what do you like about it? Do you remember yeah. you'd always ask people to have that? People would come yes. up to me and they're like, Sarah, I love your content. And Brad would be like, what do you like about it exactly? Like, what's good about it? Well, because content? the guys, <laughs> I always knew it was like simp dudes. He'd be like, I love your content. They're not but, simps. Okay. I they're, have They're value. not simps. They're good supporters. Yes, I have value to offer. I just thought it was funny to ask them like when they come up to you and they're all excited because you, you had kind of been, you were just popping for like four months yeah and they come up to you at the gym at zoo yeah. and they'd be like oh my god i love your content and i was like really what do you like about it <laughs> you no know, you i don't think that's funny though it is funny it is funny. i mean they do like you 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 do have a good personality i mean that's the thing that the thing that i said before you even started going i was like you have a good personality like you're not just like a fucking i don't want to say you're not an attractive girl because you are an attractive girl <laughs> that's but you're, what you always tell ugly girls you have a good personality no no least. you <laughs> you you are attractive but you're not that's not it like mo the, a lot of girls I don't know. It just seems like in this space specifically, they're just like, I'm hot. Look at me. Look at my body. It's like one or the other. Yeah. They love to and you're, show it off. Yeah. And you're very not that. Like, I, well, I try not to sexualize my content because you know what happens when you start sexualizing your content? Uh, then your other content won't get engagement. And then they'll only want to see the sexualized content, whether that's you in a bikini or whatever. And then you post a picture of you in a nice like two piece long sleeve, long pants. And they're Outfit. like, where's the and they're ass? Like, Ew, like they're not like, liking that. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's strategic in that way. It's like once you start showing more, then they want more and more. So why do you think, why do you think, uh, I mean, uh, you, the answer is probably simple to this, but why do you think women mostly go towards just posting the sexualized content? I think in some sense it's like validating yeah. and it gets more like or whatever that is, which can translate to validating. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's that, but. It's just like in the long term, like, you know, your mom and then your kids are all sitting at the lunch table and they're like, yo, like my mom said your mom has an OnlyFans or like had an OnlyFans. Like, what are you? Your kid hears that? So you're concerned with the future. That's why you're like, nah. <laughs> no, not even just the future. I just feel like it's not necessarily me. Yeah. Even sometimes when I'm like turned around and like I like pull my pants down a little bit and I have like spandex on under and I post a picture of that. Even that I'm like, fuck, like this is pushing it. Yeah, because I noticed you never do like the full turn. No. Yeah, no. I noticed that. And like my spandex have to be pulled. Like you can't have a little butt cheek slip. You know, <laughs> you got to be covered. <laughs> yeah. So like we're, that's what I'm curious about. You're you're making these decisions because of like your idea of what you want your brand to be or like. Yes, I think it's just who I, that's if I was posting that and like, yo, these girls look so hot posting it. I'm just saying that's not on par with who I am. Like, I'm just not a very like and you know this. I'm just not a very like sexual person i'm just kind yeah. of like prude i get i'm not prude but prude yeah maybe it's maybe you're that's just the word. you're more conservative Cons with yeah with you know with it with yourself yeah where does that come from because i'm because like you you are you are not i don't want to say odd that it's odd i think it's great but you are odd in that sense because there's you know i know a lot more women on social media and in men on social media that like they just put it out there and they're just like this yeah. is what it is and they don't care you seem to like have a little bit more reservation to it is it just like the way you grew up or? Yeah, I just feel like I grew up very like also like not conservative, conservative in like the political sense, but like, you know, like you don't need to show it for someone to like you. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, I'm not shitting on the people that do it. Like, that's totally fine. Like I see these girls or guys or whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're totally beautiful or you're so hot. Like, like the picture. It's not like I'm not trying to shit on the people that do do it. I'm yeah, just saying course. it's not me. Yeah. Why, though? I think it is how I grew up. Like even. um. Even growing up like 10 years ago, like in high in middle school or high school, and I'd wear like a shirt that was a little too short. My mom would be like, I don't think that's age appropriate. I'd be like, OK, like I see where you're coming from, you know, like just <laughs> yeah. like anything. I was kind of pointed in a different direction with like what I'd wear, like, you know, how I'd wear it or whatever. Yeah. But not in the sense that it was ever like too much pushing, but just kind of like guidance, I guess. Yeah, I just find it interesting because I think I just I don't know. I've had conversations with girls and the the same the same idea of like being a little bit more reserved but because other girls do it like are just completely okay with like flaunting it to the highest degree and it is what it is if they want to do it fine but like i think because other girls do it and they get the validation they get the likes they get the followers they get, they get the growth that other girls go well sh other girls do it so i'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do, it. do it and it's totally tempting <clears throat> i'm yeah. not gonna lie like i've sure i've like thought about it i've had yeah. conversations with people that have of and they're like I make X amount and I'm like, wow, it'd be so nice to make X amount for posting pictures. I don't know. I just, I just at the end of the day, it's just it, whatever, 200K, 300K a month wouldn't be worth it for me to like 
have the stigma of my homies or whatever being like, yo, she has an OnlyFans. Sure, I wouldn't post nude or maybe it'd just be like gym pics or swimsuit pictures. But it's that whole stigma around like having an OF. Yeah. That. Why, why don't you, why do you, what, did, what about the stigma that you don't like? I think usually people correlate the stigma with something worse than like what it could be. Yeah. Come on. Like if you hear a girl has an OF, what's your first thought? <clears throat> well, de- depending on what she posts. But yeah. I mean, thinking she's probably, you know, she's selling something. Yeah. I don't, but then again, there's, it is just a paywall. And that's the thing about OnlyFans. It's interesting is like it did for so long become pretty much like softcore to hardcore porn yeah. and amateur porn basically. And then now they're trying to come back to like, Hey, I think I know that they've tried to put a push to <clears throat> all content creators. So it was just like, it really is just a paywall, but you're right. The perception and the reason why it does so well for girls and for people is because right away people think. If they have an OnlyFans, then at some point, if it's a girl, they're going to show their pussy. Or if at some point it's a guy, they're going to show their dick. Yeah. And so, it's like, I mean, if you have a following as it is and you can be successful on something like a paywall platform, at that point you can make something where it's like I'm selling clothes or I'm selling this or I'm selling that. So it's like, yes, they're sp- supporting you. They're paying you, basically. But they're getting something in return, like a physical, not just looking at your pictures. I don't know. You I get see what, what you're I'm saying? saying? Like, yeah. you know, they get a shirt. They spend yeah. 40 bucks and they get a shirt. This is the same reason why I never did those platforms where it was like, which also I, I think is kind of crazy if like you built your following from social media, the platforms where they're like pay to say hi to someone or like pay to say like, like they would pay you and then you'd be like, happy birthday or like pay you. And then you say something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say but, the exact apps, but no, I know what you mean. But the same I've thing I was it. like, yeah, the same thing. Cause I got offered to do stuff like that all the time. I'm like, damn, it's crazy. Like if I'm going to talk to someone like on a DM or respond to a message or say a voicemail, like a voice note or whatever, yeah. I'm just going to say it. Cause I have so much other stuff from this and I'm just grateful, but to go to someone and say, pay me a hundred dollars to like do this. I think, what do we see? Emma Chamberlain. I don't know if this is true or I not. I love Emma Chamberlain. Do you? But did listen she to this. this. She, well, she, I don't know if this is true or not. Someone confirmed this. Jacob, can you look at your computer right now? But she, uh, she sold a DM, like I'll DM you, like a like a like a high message for ten thousand. I don't know if this is true or not for ten thousand dollars. No way, yeah, that I much. I don't know if it's true. No, Can that can't be Google true. That? I think it, it was on Keemstar posted this shit. Really? <clears throat> yeah, like it, he, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't just like parody. Yeah. But it was on some app where it's like you could pay for like anything. But I'm saying at that point, also like you know, do a Twitch. I'm I want to get into this. I'm going to get into Twitch or streaming or whatever. You should do kick. It was fake. It was fake. Okay. The okay. Emma Chamberlain thing was okay. fake. Emma Chamberlain <laughs> thing was fake because, bro. Behind the website, claiming that the $10,000 DM content was made for Emma's website years ago for internal testing purposes only. Or maybe that was just a oh, cop that's a cover out. Up. That sounds like a cop that out. That sounds like a cover up. <laughs> that, sounds like a, for, that sounds like a huge <laughs> cover up. Yo, you need a mic back there. Fuck, we can't hear him. So there, Jacob was saying that, like, we're joking about this thing that Keemstar posted $10,000 for, like, a DM from Emma Chamberlain. He's saying that it was never supposed to be posted and was for, like, an internal testing, which totally sounds like a Internal cover-up. testing sounds like, like, come on. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. I don't know. But all I'm saying is, like, that concept of selling, like, a thank you or a high is, like, weird. But I see what you're saying because you're, they're not actually getting something. Yeah. Like, I mean, on Twitch, I mean, you've done it. People donate money, right? Or yeah. send you money. But yeah. then you're, like, talking to them. It's a more, Oh, it's like, a fucking... It's you're there like for hours. It's a community. Yeah. It's, it's dope. Like, I feel like they're like, oh, I really fuck with this person. I want to send them 10, 20, 30, whatever it may be. I don't know how it works. But I'm saying they're seeing your true side rather than looking at a picture that maybe 10,000 other people are looking at and then paying yeah, $10. Yeah, and also, I mean... Dude, it's just an interesting concept. I don't want to ruin it for people, but it's like it can literally just be someone else sending you the photo. <laughs> it's the same photo that's sent to everyone like else. Like you may low-key be talking to a guy. <laughs> yeah. Like why do you think some people on social media are just like complete terrible like life-sucking scumbags and other people are like actually decent people? I think some because people Because people fall into this shit. I I agree. I think yeah. it's maybe material like being very materialistic. So you want more money or whatever it may be, and you don't really care. And then when the taxes hit, you go, "Wait a sec!" You're like, "I didn't have as much money I as I thought." I owe that much money. Let me fuck someone over. I didn't know I was gonna have to pay you this oh money. Oh my! God. And then they're like, "Wait a sec!" <clears throat> Shit, taxes are a lot. Or it, whatever the circumstance. Right. May, that's a good example. Yeah. Whatever the sac- circumstance may be, I think people become shitty, whether it's for money or clout or whatever it may be, to put them higher on the ladder. Yeah. yeah totally, higher yeah. on the ladder. 
Yeah. To, to gain. To, to take, gain. To, to yeah. take from someone else to give to themselves. Yeah. I mean, that's a very common thing, specifically specifically this industry, man. This industry is like full of... I think it's because it's so competitive. I think it's because, not because it's competitive, but because there's no real barriers to entry. Yeah. This, and I'm talking about social media. I'm talking about specifically fitness, fitness social media. Yeah. Because fitness social media, you can like, pay, uh, you could just basically take some steroids, be in halfway decent shape and be like, I'm a social media influencer fitness now. Because yeah, like, true. look at me and take some pictures. And like, you know, it does well on the internet because it's like, body it's it's visual yeah. someone sees it and then people get to a point where they're like wait what else do i do and then they're like oh i can just shit on all these other people and benefit myself i could shit on that person's brand and benefit my brand so the thing that i find interesting is like there's some people over all these years who really had like great success and they were never really the people who did those things my question to you is how do you see yourself continuing to move like in this industry and like, where, where, like what's your end goal? Because you're like a, you're like one of the good ones. I know Thank all you. of them. <laughs> I know all. Of them. I really know all of them or, or at least like maybe they've known me and they've shit on me, but I know all of them. I heard of all of them. You're a good one. So Thank like, you. where do you go with this? You're going to start shit on people next year. What's going no, on? No, I don't think I have the balls to shit on people. Why not? Because then I say something and then what if they come back twice as hard and then I'm just quiet and <clears> then I'm embarrassed and then. Yeah. So I just feel like I, I, it's better for me to just not shit on people and just be quiet because then I'm scared of the repercussions. Yeah. But also, I don't think that's on brand with who I am. I don't think I'd shit on people to try to. How do you create what your brand is? I think it has to do with your like your morals and what you see valuable. So where are you going with this? Because um, you're I'm, still super young. You're still I'm in still school. in school. Yeah. I'm getting my master's in business. Um, I hope that. This was always my mindset was yeah. that, you know, I'm going to do school, get my like highest like degree I can. And hopefully along the ways I get lucky. And in this case, I think I did with you responding to my DM, got lucky. Um, so now I want to get my master's, still do social media in the meantime. I should get my master's in about like eight months. I'll be done. Yeah. So then I'm hoping that I make connections along the way with social media and I do someone's like back end work. You got a job <laughs> <laughs> because then I'll have I can say I've experienced like on the forefront, like doing the actual posting and social media, the logistics behind it and the strategies. Right. But then I'll also have like a master's in business, which is a good degree. Like it's yeah. not the best, but like it's like it's good. OK, two options. I'm the Matrix right now. Red okay. or blue pill. Oh, I'm going to Bradley Martin you again. OK, I would love to hire you. I think you'd be a great employee. You're already a great employee. Thank you. Yeah. But like, like when I Bradley Martin you a year and a half, a little bit ago, I was also like, hey, you could probably do so much more than school, not than school. No, with where with what you're doing. Yeah. Like meaning you're getting a master's in the business. You've already kind of mastered and understood social media. Right. You you have the consistency in it. So <clears throat> I guess my question to you is <clears throat> why would you I would love for you to work for me. That's great. But why would you want to do that when you could continue building something of your own like it's great i could be like the selfish like yeah come work for yeah. me but just like when i first met you it's like why are you not doing more because you have what it takes to do it you've already proven that to yourself in, in all these respects the fact that you've gone all the way through school the fact that you've been able to accomplish this on, on on instagram and on social media without being like here's my asshole in every photo <laughs> here's my asshole. it's fine and it's fine yeah it's but fine. it's just like you haven't done that so you've mastered both these things pretty well, pretty quickly. Why would you not just kind of like continue to build out things for yourself? I would, I, and that's what I'm going to do, do in the meantime of me yeah. finishing my master's and see how that goes. Because someone like you who's created like a brand or whatever is great and you have longevity in the industry. But if you're just a content creator on social media, there is not much longevity. Yeah. Like for how long are you going to be posting fitness content? To, you know what I mean? I mean, you, I did it for fucking... Yes, but you also have a brand. You have gyms. Yeah, but I just did. I just made it. I just made them. I just was like, hey, I'm doing this. And I did it. And I, and I worried if it was going to work or not. And it, I f was fearful about failing, and I just did it. It's not like... No one was like, hey, yo, bro, here's the fucking blueprint. This is what you're going to do on this day. Yeah, like, I, here's the gym. Here are the keys. Yeah, I just did it, and yeah. I fucking was risking shit, and I was like, dude, if I fail, this is going to suck, but... I'm here just because I did it. So that's my question to you is like, you've already. I'm not that ballsy. I'm not. Really? I'm so like, I'm not that ballsy. 
It's so interesting. Even to me. when it comes to like, I want to invest my money, and I'm like, I can't. That's too risky. I'm like better in savings. This is something you got to improve on. That's just like how I am. Oh man, there's so much we could talk about with that. Like your money and savings right now is just like, <laughs> it's like really going down. Like if it's like a, it's, if it's like a hundred thousand dollars, it's not worth that. We're just being honest. Money's only good in motion. This kind of money. Not that like you need to just throw it all away, but there are things you got to invest in. Well, sure. I want to like maybe, buy a house and yeah. in the I next know. year, <clears throat> just hoping. Dude, that's huge. I'm hoping, but I also don't have many expenses. I live at home right now. Yeah. Um, I don't buy any of my gym clothes. Thank you, Rog. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, the only thing I spend my money on is gas and food, but I don't have many expenses. Like I'm so fortunate to live with my mom and she pays. So what do you do with your money? Phone bill. I save it in the bank. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get more interesting with your investments for sure. Cause that money is like, I do. If you're saving it for like the, the, the big nut of like, okay, I'm going to buy, I'm going to get a mortgage and then get a house. Perfect. But yeah. after that, you're like, you don't want money to just sit there. I know, but I'm just not like, I'm not ballsy and I'm not educated enough to invest it. I'll help you. Do you have Robinhood? Yeah, but Robinhood is not the, not the app. Oh, I heard that's the starter one. No, it's the one that sucks because like if you buy on it, then like they actually own your assets and you have to like sell and buy through them. It's kind of shitty. Oh, it's a weird thing. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Okay. You'd want to buy it on like a different platform if you're talking about like investing in, in stocks or crypto. I'm not, I'm not trying to make this a shit on Robin Hood thing. No, I, cause I, I started on Robin Hood, but I was like, you, you don't actually, and then you grow up a little bit. Then you, yeah, you grow up. Then you realize like, wait a sec, I can't actually transfer this shit the way I want to. Yeah. Anyways, no, that's a stupid. So big picture though, back to what I was saying. If you've gotten so good at those things and you've mastered those things, the social media, like fucking seemingly life in general and how you want to move, then why would you not like take more risks in, in directions that you want to go in? Like, if you would go like safe work for me and a company, why not be like, oh, I also think about maybe building my own because aren't you doing s- something like that? I am. I'm trying to do my own clothing. We'll yes. see how it goes. I really love the shirts. Yeah, I think you love the shirts, too. No, they're great. But why do you think <laughs> why? Why do you like? I don't know. It's so weird, but it's risky and it's a lot. Yeah, but it's a lot. But hold on. That's what I'm saying. So is doing what you've already done. The social media, you've proven you could do it. The school, you've proven you could do it. Like you're not the kind of person. Yeah. Risks are risks, yeah. but you're the kind of person that like you just, you perform because you like, I don't know. You're just that human. Yeah. You just do it. Like I, like I'm telling you the number one thing I noticed about why you have success on social media, it's not just your personality, not just your looks, but it's because you're so fucking consistent. And I, that's the, yeah. that's the most important thing in all of this in success. I make it a checklist. Literally every day I have the minimum things like YouTube shorts. I have to post three of them, two or three YouTube shorts a day. Yeah. I have to post 120 snaps a day. I have to post up an Instagram picture at least every other day, depending if I have the content or not. 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, but I try to like make it a checklist. And then for me, when I do it like that, it becomes routine. But this is what I'm this is what I'm saying. That I find so interesting is like that's how you succeed at anything. Yeah. Like if you were like, I want to learn how to be better at investing. You just go like sp- the same concept and just include it in I what know. you're doing. I know. And if you want to be better at what well, you want to build a business, it's just the same thing. You just learn things. That is over all time. it takes. You're right. So that's why I'm so curious. Like, why does your mind go work for someone else? For me, I've always been the type that it's like, I want to do the bare minimum, but as best as I can to get by. That's so interesting. But also be successful. Like in school, I, I graduated with my bachelor's with summa cum laude honors, which is like the ha- highest honors you can get. I had a 3.95 GPA. Fucking nerd. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But anyways, what I'm saying is I got A's in all my classes, but with minimum effort. Like whether it was, you know, using Quizlet or whether it was What the asking, fuck is Quizlet? That's a cheater thing? Did you hear this, man? What the fuck is Quizlet? I'm fucking 33. I'm about to be 34 years old. I'm you guys not know what school. Quizlet is, right? School's for yeah. fucking losers, man. Quizlet? Yeah, Your we audience. didn't have that. When I was going to school, it was like fucking read this book they'll know what quizlet is yeah because they're fucking 23 no the audience Quizlet's like cheating. yeah it's, it's like you're a cheater okay let's not go. i cheated the old-fashioned way i looked at people next to me i sat i knew you know, you know what matter of fact this is this makes sense motherfuckers back in the day they had to be more resourceful because they had to figure out who the smart kid was then they had to be like yo what's good bro and then they had to sit next to him and be like Finesse. got you yeah you see you yeah, just yeah. went to quizlet you good i'm gonna go pee real quick and then we're gonna talk more about this this okay. is a very important topic 
Okay. All right, guys, shout out to one of our sponsors, Green Chef. Now, check this out. If you're like me and you do not like going to the grocery store and picking the things that you're like, yo, okay, I need this, I need this, I need this to cook this meal, Green Chef has got your back. Super simple, tons of variety, very, very convenient. All you have to do is literally like pick the, the meal plan you kind of want. There's like keto, there's vegan, there's all different kinds of styles, clean, everything where like that you could want for your diet. Now, the cool thing about it is it basically takes all the guesswork out of the shopping. So you could pick, okay, I want this meal plan. I want my meal plan like this, this, or this. And they basically send you all the ingredients. So it makes like that portion of it, which for me is huge because I don't like going and having a list and going to the store and be like, okay, I need to buy this, buy this, buy this, and this. It's literally just guesswork taken out of it for you, all sent to you. You just, you just open it up, get it done, easy right? This is probably the easiest way if you're going to cook and meal prep your food. Now, the cool thing about this too, right now, basically they've added so many options on Green Chef where basically what you can do is you can pick even to have like a keto variety type meal. You could have a vegan variety type meal. You could have just regular like classic clean eating variety type meal. And you could even do it where you could do it throughout the day. Like if I wanted one vegan meal throughout the day, I could say, okay, I want this meal to be like this. I want this meal, my dinner to be, you know, let's say low in carbs or I want my my breakfast meal to be high in carbs, something like that. So there's a ton of customization. It's really easy service, easy to use. Greenchef.com slash rawtalk60 to get 60% off when you use code rawtalk60. Again, that's greenchef.com slash rawtalk60. You get 60% off when you use code rawtalk60 and free shipping. So give it a shot. Super easy, super convenient. Let's get back into this podcast. Okay, so chat GPT. What the fuck was, what was that? You know, Snapchat. You're literally, okay. She's <laughs> literally Snapchatting the bot. Okay. No, um, I'm kidding. Which I probably should be doing because Snapchat is the best fucking app on the planet. <laughs> Anyways, um, I love that. I seriously, I know we talked about it earlier. I'm going to say it again. Snapchat, you're the best. It's crazy. Everyone download Snapchat right now. This is 100% uh, not, not really ad. sponsored, not an ad, just true. It's not sponsored, yeah. Not at all. I just actually love it. Anyway, so chat GPT, what, you asked it to answer questions for you? Yes. Like, and it- if I was like, solve this, pro- like this crazy business problem would it be able to just do it yes yes what can't it do it can do everything it's insane it's actually crazy like when we're done with this you need to log on and like write in a prompt for it to solve and do and it will do it but i feel like every time someone does this we're like making it smarter and eventually it's gonna take over because they were saying did you see the thing it was like elon musk and all these like top like tech people were like yo we should we got to slow down on like this side of ai i don't know if it's chat gpt but some other side of ai that's like I don't know. Too smart. Yeah. Otherwise, like it's gonna be dire for us. Yeah. Are you afraid of anything like that? You just like fuck it. No, because social media will always be a thing. No, social media has nothing to do with what I'm saying. No, but I'm saying I'm not worried because like our jobs are secure. <laughs> it's not even our jobs. I'm talking about like our lives. Dude. Oh, I thought you meant like it might get people out of a job. No, no, I'm talking about just like end up being like you know the Terminator. You ever seen the Terminator? Like Skynet. No taken over no but i get what you're saying because you like have, the end of the world like at shit. restaurants instead of waiters there's those cart like the electric carts that bring your food i'm not talking about that's freaky, i'm not talking actually. about well that's a real thing that's gonna happen people are gonna lose their jobs and gonna be fucked that yeah. part's it's gonna be sad for sure but i'm talking about like way past that part where it's like we're replacing humans because they're like you know we replaced all these workers now we're just gonna replace the people and then they're just like then they're just bad they're going bad on us you no. ever think about that? No, I try not to actually. Yeah, I've seen too many movies. Yeah. Way too many movies. I try not to think about that. Anyways, fuck it. It is what it is. Let's 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 get back to social media. How the fuck did you actually get a million followers in, in a year? Um, besides, you know. No, I'm not, not Besides what? I'm not what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to joke with you. What were you going to say? I was going to joke Please, with you. Please, tell the people. Clout chasing. Oh my fucking God. Um, <laughs> being for the team. Uh, okay, what you're that, not, we'll stop right there. We'll see, stop even right. Sylvie was like, sh- that was not right. I'm well, you're not, not for the team. I'm only saying that because those are the comments and I know those are the comments that bug you're you. You're probably was, the fucking, co- the commenter. You're the one commenting. The I'm shit. chat GPT and I'm like, yo guys, everyone <laughs> yo, says, guys. she's for the team. but this is the, I wanted to talk about this cause this is something that I know I've talked to you off camera. It does kind of bother you a little it, bit. That's the, I don't take anything to heart. It's not like I will ev- ever ruin my day over like social media or the comments that are said. Yeah. But sometimes when I see the for the team comments on my TikTok, it kind of like. Well, this is the it, thing. It's it's a slap in the face. Lindsay. Yeah. But the reason why I think it happens is because like you are such a bro, like you're such a homie, like with everyone. I think that, you know, you're maybe you're like 
demeanor comes across like maybe you're flirty because you're nice because you're talkative because like you're charismatic and i think that's just a common thing that happens like because like, i think you're right because most most girls i guess when you look i look into like social media girls like either like you look at them you're like oh damn they're super hot or like they're funny you have this like weird in between yeah or like you're not really funny you're not super hot it's like but you're like both you're kind of ugly. You're not really that I'm funny. Fucking you. I'm fucking with you. No, but I'm you, kidding. you play I know that. You, you play that line and you're like, just because like it is actually your personality. And I think that's why like, because you're friendly to everyone that they go, she's for the team. Yeah. But it's an interesting thing because I know you personally. How I so, am on camera is the same as I am off camera. I yeah. think I'm the same energy. Like, Yeah, I, I think, I wonder why it translates so much to the people saying like, or maybe they just want to hate on you. Yeah. Because they, they like you. You know, they say there's a thin line between love and hate. Very thin line. And I have a lot of love. Hate. And hate. For me. No. Just oh, in general. Just in general. No, okay. you got a lot of love. Oh, okay. I was no. like. No. I have, why would I have hate for you? I don't know. We make the best content. Honestly. I think we do. Yeah. Everyone thinks we're uh, in love. Yeah, everyone does think that. Why do you think they think that? I think it's because we joke around and make, like, the, like the same thing you were, you were saying, like friendly banter, whatever it may be. And they're like, oh, they're in love. We both have the sh the same like shitty, sarcastic humor. I think we're very similar in that aspect. Yeah, I think that's why. And I think we're both just like kind of not obnoxious, but like loud. Yeah. And just like obnoxious, like obnoxious and like yeah. hit heads. And then like it's caught on camera and they're like, oh, my God, like they're so in love. Yeah. It's funny because it's like it's very uh, it's very candid, like it's very improv. It is. It's none of, it none is. of it's scripted. <laughs> yeah. It's just like you turn the camera on and it starts going. I saw one the other day where uh, we were outside of the gym. It was on Best of Bradley Martin. Shout out my boy. Um, again, the greatest Instagram and TikTok account. Anyways, um, and we were outside of the gym and I don't even know how we did this because you were talking some shit to your YouTube guy. Yeah. And then it, it was this thing where you were like, oh, uh, you're like, what would you do if, if a girl ever proposed to you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I I'd you. probably say no. And it was just, I, I remember thinking about this moment because like, I watched that clip and I was like, whoa, this shit was funny. Yeah, like and I was like, oh, oh, never mind then. And we made it so awkward. And I feel like we, it was funny because I'm looking at it as a viewer and I was like, well, this is funny because the, the awkwardness was funny. Funny, yeah. And then when I was doing it, we didn't plan it. We didn't even think of it. We just was like this. Yeah, it's like, for us, it's just like the one take. It's and weird. it's like, and then it gets chopped up and it gets super fucking funny. But like, why? Like, how does that happen? Do you think you're just like born or like, or like you like an actor or something? I don't think I'm an actor, but I think mm. that I just have high energy. Like, I'm just energetic. But that's not why. That's not why you're able to have a like, because I've done improv stuff for like years. Yeah. On, so on social media and YouTube. And like with the Domizetti character, like all the content I did with him was all improv. Like we'd have a concept and then I'd play this like character with you. You haven't done, you've been on social media for like literally, literally a little more than a year and you two for even less than that. Yeah. But you have this like natural sense of comedy and this natural sense of like being able to read the situation. Yeah. I, tr I try to be aware of what's going on around me and how I can adapt to it because the funniest people that I watch, like the most content that I enjoy is like funny people on social media, whether that's like Gideon or like Danny Duncan, like that type of like, you know, they fuck with you and like Love they're just guys, funny. Yeah. I think that's the best type of content, the best type of content to watch. So is that how you develop some of like your, your, your I guess your, I don't want to say character, but like some of your IQ in regards to how you make content, like from watching other people's content? I think so. But I think that's also just how I am. Like I was saying like on camera, off camera. I still fuck with people and I still like do the banter whether the camera's on or not. The camera just gives me a little bit more of an excuse to do. It. <laughs> yeah. So you've always kind of been that way. Yeah. It's just interesting. Cause I noticed with you and I, and that's why it's, I like film with you. Cause it's so simple. It's like show up and like have literally zero plan and like, but have like at least a few dope pieces of content. Yeah. You don't really have to plan beforehand, but the same goes with you. I'm like, as long as Brad's there, it'll be good content. Well, but, but that's the thing that's interesting to me is that I, but I've, I've been doing it for years. Yeah. You haven't. So when I look at you, I'm like, damn, the shit like she could really fucking you're going places, kid. I'm like many people comment <laughs> on my shit. Mini Bradley Martin. Yes, yeah, because you're fucking hated. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're hated, dude. No, you're really loved. Um, But no. So this is interesting. Uh, Like the, the idea. This idea of you, you said it 
the way you are off camera is the same kind of way and style you are kind of like on camera, right? And I think that's the only way someone can be successful is if you want to do social media or whatever it is, but you do it off camera and on camera. Like Jacob edits off camera and on camera. If he were to do that, he could implement that every day yeah, because so, that's his life. Yes. So I had the same conversation when we did the full send pod with Chris Bumstead. And I've had this conversation with tons of really successful people. But the people who are greatest at things, the things that like are outward reflecting, I was like, oh, that guy's so good at this or oh, that girl's so good at that are people who really do these things because they really love them. Like Jacob has been editing and like doing this shit and he actually like enjoys the whole process so that obviously he does it for a job. He's, he's taking more care in it. Yeah. You do this, you like, this is who you are on or off camera. So when you're like performing, it's like seamless and simple. Yeah. Chris was talking about in relationship to like bodybuilding. He, he, he loved it. He enjoyed it so much after he found sports. He's like, well, I like this bodybuilding shit. I want to continue to be competitive. Like he has that mentality. The people who are really successful at the things that they do are very successful because like it really means something to them because it's like also who they are. Yeah. Like versus a lot of people get into things because they see someone else do it and they go, I want to be successful too. Let me almost pretend like I like this shit. Yeah. Then it never works. There's no longevity in that. Yeah. Because you'd be working out if the camera wasn't there or so your following wasn't there. You'd still be working out. Same goes with me. Oh, yeah. I mean, before this shit existed, that's what I did. Yeah. Like, this didn't. It wasn't like some thing that. I was like, oh, I can be famous on social media. I was just working out and it was my life. And yeah. I was a trainer and I was like, oh, this new app looks cool. Cause I was always trying to figure out how to like live on the internet because I wanted to, I've told the story before, but because I wanted to be able to play video games and like stay at home and work out. Yeah. That was my like typical gym bro idea. Yeah. I was like, I got out of sports and I was like, I love working out. I love playing video games. I want to be able to be at home as much as possible. Like with my dogs and like be able to work out and eat and play video. And that was my like, how stay do I figure dad. out? Stay at home <laughs> fucking scumbag. And I was like, how do I figure this out? And then the internet started, I'm like reading about like these things coming out. And then, you know, being the fucking old man that I am, 2011, end of 2010. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I was like, I was just found the app because I was like constantly looking on the app store to find apps to figure out like, because I tried Twitter and I was like, I don't know how to do this I shit. And they're like, social media is going to change the world. They were talking back then about e-commerce and all the shit, with, which yeah. now we know is your whole life is different because of it. Yeah. My life as well, obviously, but. Um, yeah, I always, I always like, <laughs> I had like weird motivations was like to do the things that I, yeah. that I love. If I, I remember this, I think about this too. If streaming was a thing, then I probably would have just been like, not even fuck the gym. Cause I still would have worked out, Yeah, but I would have been like Tyler, you know who Tyler one is? He's a streamer who he also is like a gym bro, like okay, super jacked yeah. and strong. That's what I probably would have done. I probably would, but I probably would have been a streamer. Because I was such a nerd playing video games. But didn't you try streaming like last year for a while? Yeah, but so last year for a while, I'm so involved in this stuff. Yeah. I'm talking about back then. Back then. Okay, before back then this I was, stuff existed. Yeah, before I was like, oh, I have all these things to deal with. Back then, I was a, just a huge nerd. Gotcha. I would work out and I would trip play video games. Probably the equal amount. That's crazy. Actually, more video games. I had yeah. Way more video games. But like my, my focus was those two things and then like eating food. And what I'm saying is back then, if streaming was a thing, because like the, the circumstances that I was in as far as the video games I was playing, I was like really like high level in those fucking video games, yeah. like World of Warcraft at the time. But it wasn't streaming wasn't a thing that people were doing. Yeah. So I would, sooner or later, I was destined to be a fucking uh, Internet icon, an Internet nerd. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hate it, hate it or love it. But anyways, this is t to you, right? Like when you were doing this you know, social media grind at any point over the last like year and a half, which is so crazy to think you did it in, in like a little over a year. Did you ever want to quit? No, no, not yet. Not yet. They never got to you. No, not to that extent. Because what I think of it is it's a job. It's monetized for me. I make money from it. It's a job. You're never going to hundred percent love any job. You know, with whatever job it is, even if I was sitting at an office, at an office from nine to five, there would be shit that would bother me or yeah. someone would get on my nerves or I'd bump heads with someone or whatever it may be. So you don't believe the typical, if you love what you do, you don't work a day. Oh my in your God. Life. No, yeah. I don't believe that. <laughs> I know. It's pretty funny because this is like the ideal, like two years ago, looking, I'd be like, oh my God, these people on social media, like making TikToks, whatever it may be. Like they're so lucky. Like they're so lucky. This is such a good, easy job, which in comparison, it is relatively easy. I'm not going to say this is as hard as blah, blah, I blah. Say, I say, depending how serious you take depending it. Depending how serious you take yeah. it, yes. But um, it's still a job. Yeah. 
Like there will be times that, and for me, I think it's a little bit harder because I'm also doing school at the same time. So, so many times I'm like, I can't hang out or I can't do this. I have to do X, Y, and Z. Or I have to do school or I have to like post this or I have to edit this or. Yeah. It's all just different perspective. I always say like, you know, if you love, like the only way you could like, you know, never work is if you didn't pay taxes. True. You know, if at the end of the year didn't come and the government was like, let me fuck you. Did you do your taxes this year? Of course, man. Yeah. Mm, let's not. Let's. Have you ever gotten audited? Audited? No. You haven't? Knock no. on wood. No, I, would, I pay my taxes. I wouldn't get audited. No, but it's random. They say at okay, least. Okay, well, once let's every... not put it out there. Jesus Christ, our phones are listening. Chat GPT, dude. They're gonna fuck it next. I'm you know. saying it's completely random. Okay, well, let's like stop talking about okay, this geez. so they don't like completely randomly directly select this podcast and then. Stop. Yeah. You're freaking me out. They're going to come for you too now. Okay. Better put your phone here. in airplane mode, which I don't even know if that matters, but. No, they probably still listen. Holy shit, dude. That's such a crazy concept. The fucking, the internet. That you talk about something and then it's on your Instagram ads. God, dude. It's, they're just, they're stalking us. What, what do you think? We got to talk about this then. The, the TikTok ban and, and all this, like this, what is it? Reform Act or whatever the fucking thing yeah. is. Have you seen about that? What do you, do you, what do you know about I have seen it? about it, but I haven't. F- I can't say what I've seen is legit because I've seen it only on social media. I need to do like, I need to actually look at it. Yeah. But well, I'll tell you. So then I give you, okay, I want your you. opinion on it. Yeah. I got okay. you. I read stuff. Um, so it's a, basically it's a, it's a, it's a outwardly like a ban on TikTok, mm-hmm. but inwardly it's also like a restraint on e-commerce and stuff, right? In a kind of invasion of privacy okay. where like they, they're also gaining access to like, people's fucking home cameras and any basically like they're they were like submitting to essentially the government spying on us and not being able to use in this case uh foreign adversaries platforms Mm -hmm. being this one being tiktok but then that also foreign adversaries being able to like change however they see fit whenever they see fit if they were like you know tomorrow puerto rico is you know or no obviously not puerto rico but like fucking brazil was a foreign adversary and any app or any platform from them we couldn't use like it's it's a it's a crazy concept saying that like you basically now we're kind of like they're starting to try to get more control on social media yeah and also have the right to like go into our lives and into our cameras and into and like outwardly like hey we're gonna do this yeah so that's the the crazy part about this like tiktok ban thing that if it gets passed it's also being passed along with all this other like pretty much invasion of privacy do you think it will get passed (laughs) I mean, (laughs) when's it supposed to, when's the date for it or whatever? I don't know the exact date, but I hope it doesn't get passed because it's for sure. TikTok's gone, right? Because it's a foreign adversary. Fuck TikTok. Fuck TikTok. (laughs) Um, Snapchat. No, but let's go. go No, but all the other things in that, uh, in the actor. Scary. Or scary. Yeah. Really scary. But I think a lot of people are focusing on like, oh my God, it's going to ban TikTok because that's what's what is all over social media, just the TikTok portion of it, not like all the other behind the scenes yeah. stuff you just mentioned. Well, yeah, you know, it's interesting too, how they're able to, I mean, it, it's just such a weird thing because they've, they frame this TikTok thing and, you know, I obviously I don't know enough about all of this stuff to really like speak on it, but I'm going to fucking speak on it regardless. Like it's, it's, it's just a funny thing where they, they start to convince people that like, Oh, China's spying on you. So we got to stop this. Yeah. Um, not that that's a good thing and that we want that, but at the same time, like all these other apps are not necessarily Chinese owned, but like, they're also all spying on us. Yeah. So it's like, obviously we could say, oh, we don't want China to spy on us, but our own government does anyways. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, we're, we're, it's just a weird time. It's honestly one of the weirdest times ever. Um, and like, there's so much shit that's changing and shifting. Do you ever get afraid for your future or like, do you want kids? Like, do you want to like, you know? I can't say you're going to have kids in the next, you know, year no, or so, but I do want, I do want kids. I think eventually, Yeah. I just don't think about it right now, Yeah. but I would want kids. Like I'd want two kids, but do you, are you afraid of any of like, cause this shit's, I don't know. I, I, I don't... know. And I understand what you're saying hundred percent. I'm just not the type that thinks that far into the future. That's probably really good. I never do. I am not an overthinker and it, I think it's bad that I don't think that far ahead, but I think just far enough ahead as I have to like. Maybe a year at most, but I don't think about. I think you put a time on that. A year. A year at most, yeah. That's but, so funny. But I don't see things change. Like, I mean, I'm sure things will change, but I just don't think about it. Yeah, it's just interesting because it's like, 
I understand that mentality. I think it's like, it's easy to think that. And then next thing you know, it's like, when it's finally really changing and it's affecting you, then you're like, wait a sec. But I then at that point. I should have probably thought about this sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. But yeah, this this whole TikTok thing, I just think it's an interesting, I don't know, man. It feels like it's like every year, every there's two something. years, there's some new thing. They're like, they're creeping closer with like control. Yeah. The government control and a taking. It is scary. But you don't give a fuck. It but seems I don't. Like. You're I don't just think. like, I'm just going to post on social media, go to fucking two mil. Finish my master's <laughs> two, mil, <baby. laughs> two mil on the way no. post on Snapchat. Simple life. Yeah, no, I, but it's wrong to have the mindset I do have. It's not, it's not wrong. Like thinking such short term, but I feel like maybe a lot of people think that way. Short term. Yeah. Yeah. But sh- being short term is not necessarily a bad thing. Cause like sometimes people like me or people that just think too far, you're like, you're fucking, because you're thinking so far about where it go, might you go. You think too far. I think too, too short. I think that there's a fine Definitely a balance. mix. Because, like, I'll probably create some, like, you know, anxiety Holy around you, the future. Yeah, you overthink to the max. I don't, I'm not a, I'm a very low ang- anxiety person. I don't have anxiety. Sure, sometimes I, like, overthink it for half a second, but then I'm like, eh, fuck it. Half a second. Yeah. Fuck, what a beautiful life. <laughs> That's a beautiful life, man. No, but then some shit happens and I'm like, I wish I would have thought more about this before it happened. Yes, but I don't know. I don't I think your way is better though. Because it's like then you could live more in the moment in regards to like all the things you're doing and trying to accomplish instead of like the worry of the future. Cuz yeah, it is good to think about, oh, I got to worry about this, worry about that. But there are some things that like you literally just can't control and yeah. make your way. Yeah. So the way that you're doing it is actually like really beneficial. Yeah. Super beneficial. You- I think so because like I've seen girls like they're or guys too like they want to post something and they think like 30 45 minutes about what they're going to post what the caption's going to be relating this back to social media but I'm yeah. saying like I always like eh good enough like throw it up and it's interesting because then obviously you have success yeah you're not I hesitant. try not to like I'm not going to overcomplicate I'm like okay it's good enough like I like it hopefully and I'm the opposite. Even though I've been doing oh my this for god, so many I years. know I've seen you. You're like, is this good? Is this is this good? Like, should I the caption? And I know, so I just I just don't even post. Yeah, I know you. These guys rag on me all the time. I just don't even post shit. Like you. Posts. He has the mo- he has unlimited <laughs> content and he doesn't post. <laughs> yeah, and it's because you overthink. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's really bad. It's honestly a really bad thing, but. Yeah, there's no but here. It's no, just a bad. No it's just you, a bad thing. You overthink to the max. Yeah, the max. I, I have a problem for sure. A lot of them, a lot of them. It's okay. Which is why I go to the gym. Why did you get involved in the gym in the first place? Because you love the gym. Obviously, it's it's clear. I love the gym. Regardless, I'd be work. I think I'll be working out for the rest of my life yeah i mean it was clear when i first found you regardless of social media it was clear you did the gym for real yeah it's the like two hours of the day that i know i can be happy (laughs) (laughs) why the other hours you can't be happy no this is like guaranteed happiness i like how serious you were about that i'm serious i am this is guaranteed i know the people like i'll like the people that are at the gym like i'll make short like conversation it's my it's my two hours of social hour as well yeah you get out you talk to people when did you realize that how old were you? Well, I, I've only been working out for two years. I started April of 2021. It's actually kind of insane. Yeah. But like, I'm I'm a different person. Like, I feel like if you knew me before April of 2021 and you know me now, you're going to be like, wow, so much more self-worth. What was, <laughs> like, she what, grew up a little bit. What was so different, though? I think I was just so insecure. About what? About everything. About how I looked. About, like, everything about myself like what like like the banter and stuff i make now i would not have had the balls to like you know be extroverted enough to say how i think in a group setting why because my self-confidence was so shit but i didn't realize it at the time until i look back and i'm like wow that's like i look for pictures or videos to make like a transformation or whatever video and i'm like i hid my body under like Big ass sweatshirts, baggy jeans, whatever right. it may be, because I didn't like the way I looked. Why did you want to change it? Like, how did, was the gym you trying to change it, or like did the you gym know? was me trying to change it? The gym, I, like, I wanted to. My brother would always like measure his food or whatever it may be, like down to the 
Graham. So your brother was in the gym before you? Yes, he was. Okay. And then I'd always see him like, you know, he'd go to Costco every week, spend $300 and like measure his foods. And he loved his lifestyle at the time. Like he loved it. And I was like, that's kind of appealing to me. I'm, I just sit in my room and I get like a McDonald's burger and a McDonald's Coke and I call it a day. Damn, so you were full on scumbag before this. Scumbag. I think I was just down bad. Yeah, scumbag. Yeah, I, mean, scumbag. I don't mean it literally, no, obviously. Yeah. But like, I was, or like I was. getting McDonald's in your room is like, dude. Yeah, I knew. I at least eat it on the way home from McDonald's you're before right, you get yeah. home. No. Like to bring it I'd, into your room is like kind of sad. In my room with the lights off. Oh, fuck. You know, I called you once and it was like seven o'clock and you were like, I'm going to sleep. And I was like, okay. Yeah, but that's when I was like, you know, muscle grows in your sleep. <laughs> I was like, dude, this chick's a psychopath. Yeah, no, Seven I o'clock with a cat. Yeah. I, I was like, she's insane. You're yes, in bed. You're now, laying down. I was like, what? Are now, you sleeping? Now I do it in better spirit. Like, I'm happy doing it now. Then I was like, I have nothing to do. I might as well sleep. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I do it in yeah. better. I have better yeah. intentions there. Then I was like, my life sucks. I, do you think, do you think you just got to that point? Just cause like, I mean, just cause you didn't have the gym or you got there because like of other things in your life that were happening. Like, how did you get to that point where you're like, I'm a shithead eating McDonald's? I think I felt, I, I mean, I got in a cycle of just school. Maybe I'd see my friends. Maybe I wouldn't. I was barely eating. It was just so unfulfilling. Everything was unfulfilling. I'd hang out with my friends and I'd come back home and I'd be like, that fucking sucked. Like I, I was with people, but I felt alone. Yeah. Like I'd be with 10 people, like 10 girls. And I'd come home and I was like, wow. Like, I mean, at least I wasn't physically alone, but I felt alone. Is it just how you always felt growing up? Or like, did that start to happen as you got a little bit older? I think it was just like a year funk for me as I got older. What, what spawned it? Like what started it? Just life, just growing just, up? I, yeah, I can't pinpoint exactly what it was, but I just remember a time where I'd eat like one dollar burger from McDonald's and one Coke, and that'd be my entire food for the 24 hour period. And I would so much value that drive to McDonald's because I'd be like alone playing music like it was nighttime. I'd get the food, go back to my room, turn the lights off, eat it. Same rotation every day for a while. And then like school and other bullshit. School, other bullshit that like was so unfulfilling. So then why were you like, you, your brother was eat, cooking the food or making the food and you're like, maybe I'll try that. And I kind of like resented how like happy he was in his lifestyle. And I was like, if he can do it, like I can do it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Costco, buy some salmon and rice. And then bought that. And then my mom would cook it for me. Obviously, I can't cook. My mom would cook yeah. it for me. Like, it got to the point that when I was under eating, she was like, Sarah, we need to go to the doctor. Like, you are not eating. How skinny were you? I was 100 pounds. Five Holy foot, shit. five, 100 pounds. Which for me, I was never, growing up, I was never like, a, I'm not meant to be skinny. It's weird. Like, my you, body type. Because you like, have really good genetics. Like I do so have, yeah. It's not, it's not normal to work out for a year and be like, kind of jacked. Yeah. For, for girls and for most guys, too, yeah. as well. Um, but I think it was because like my starting point was malnourished, like literally eating disorder was my starting point where I wasn't feeding my body anything sustainable. So till I started giving it protein, carbs, whatever. That's probably also why like, you felt shitty too. Yeah, a hundred percent. Without You're really right. under, understanding, I think a lot of people don't realize that like they feel bad because of their diet. Yes. And I don't think they realize or understand that at all. No. Where like that was just making your situation mentally worse. way worse. It was 100%. And then you fix that and then it changes everything in you. It changes everything. And I think the most valuable thing someone can do is realize their own self-worth. Because then it'll change the way you allow people to treat you and how you treat yourself. Yeah. Like your own self-worth dictates everything in your life. Well, yeah, I mean, that's... So that's the interesting thing about fucking everything in life period is like even relationships, people that you like allow in your life is a reflection of self. Like yeah. everything is just kind of like showing you how you let people fucking talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. All of it. So growing up, you always had a good relationship with your mother. Yes. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. We were always like not the type that you tell her like secrets to maybe. But the type that she was always there for you. <laughs> like, not like, what secrets do you keep from your mom? Not secrets, but I'm saying like you don't disclose. You don't have to disclose like the every- steroid usage. You were like, I'm not gonna tell her. Yeah, about like this. mom, like sure, you found Anavar, not mine. Not mine. It's like <laughs> I'm kidding. probably bros, you know? Like <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't do steroids, but um, like I wouldn't tell her like secrets or like bits and pieces about my life. 
but like she was still there for me. What about now? Do you think you talk to her more about your life than you? Yeah, do I now? talk to her more about my life now. I think, but yeah. I think it's also because now I'm at the point where I'm not as scared because I'm. What What is she gonna do? I'm 22. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still do live at home. Like she could totally she still kick cooks me out. Your food. Huh? She still cooks. Okay, your... why we gotta say that on camera? I mean, you said it moments ago, but let's just. I'm just but saying. But like years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She does cook my food, but so I'm totally you're grateful. pretty much fucked without her. I am fucked without her. Damn. I am. When are you gonna learn how to cook? It's not in the it's not in the cards for me. I'm not gonna learn how to cook. I'm not gonna learn how to clean. I am sorry. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's tough. I just I'm hoping that, you know, my partner would do that for me. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna date I'm a... okay. I'm the norms don't have to be there. I'll be the breadwinner. So you're gonna date a girl. I'm didn't say I'm gonna date a girl. Okay. Well you said two things that just reference dating a girl. No, I'm just going to sound really insensitive right now, but no, I don't but care. guys, 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 I'm sure can cook and clean and they'd like love three of to, them. huh? Like three of them. <laughs> no. And they would love to not work and I'll just bring home the money and they can cook. And, I'm wow, kidding. You want to stay at home, dad? <laughs> That's kind of dope. You can be like a sugar mama. <laughs> yeah. Damn. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I know how to cook. all that. No, you can't cook. <laughs> That's no, bullshit. No, I actually can't really cook. I don't like to cook. I can't cook. Yeah, for me it's just time consuming. I could do better things with my time than cook. Like what? Hmm? Like what? Hmm. Lay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, with your cat at seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the rest of your childhood. Let's talk about the rest of your life. Okay. What else? How's your how's uh what's what's going on with your dad? Um, my dad passed away when I was younger. Yeah. I was like five and we were out of the country. We were in Germany at the time, and he passed away. How did he pass away? Heart attack. That's tough. Yeah. Well, you guys were in Germany? Yeah, we were visiting my mom's, like, my mom, my aunt, my mom's sister, and he was a professor at a, you know, at a college, so he had to stay, like, back home, and, yeah. So, obviously, you didn't get much time? No, I was, like, too young, but... Yeah. Has that, has that, how has that affected, like, I don't know, you just, your life, the direction of your life? Do you think it has? I Obviously, think it has. Yeah. yeah. I think it has. Like, I always assume people are temporary. Yeah. That's a real one. I relate to that heavily. That, like, everything, I mean, everything is temporary. It is. That's the thing. But I, I guess I understand in that sense of, like, the idea of love and love or a person that you love or it's, you know not being in your life forever it's just really i was actually talking to jake about this or driving back from fucking vegas uh, going through my own shit but it is actually <clears throat> i don't know somewhat soothing to know that like yo just everything is temporary not that like you just treat people or treat things like it doesn't matter but i know how hard it is to feel like you know um it's i don't know it's hard to involve more people because you it's funny when I think about you now, what I know about you, you definitely um, keep to yourself. Yeah, I do. A lot like me. Um, because maybe, are you afraid of like bringing people close to you? I don't think I'm afraid of that, but I think I definitely have walls built up. Yeah. But like for me, it's just the idea of like death or whatever, like scares me. Like I can... You, like you I remember once we talked about it and you're like as you grow up you become to be like more like content with it maybe like you're more okay but like I just don't see that for me yeah I didn't when I was your age and I still I still are like really am fearful of it but it's it's over the last like three years it's really subsided like it's really changed for me I mean I, the stuff that I've done to work on it like therapy there's other things I've done to try to like fix it like yeah. my relationship to it um, but I think, yeah, that, I mean, that spawned for me. My dad took his life when I was six, you know, not a heart attack. Um, but different circumstances, regardless, the same idea came out of where I was like, I was, I was always kind of afraid to bring someone close to me. And then I would always kind of sabotage the, like the love and the relationships in my life that I did have. Cause I was just afraid of it leaving. So that like, almost like my control and, oh, I can get ahead of that. And I'd be the one making it leave instead of it leaving me. Yeah. Like you're the one in power kind of, which like was so crazy. Cause like what I wanted at the end of the day was just to have a good, strong relationship with a person. doesn't matter. But you self-sabotage. Yeah. yeah. Self-sabotage shit. Do you find yourself doing that in relationships or things? I think I am. I think I do set myself up for self-sabotage. 
A but, lot. but in what but in what like friend because i never noticed that like because with me you're actually a really good friend like i can call you up and i talk think about i am whatever. a better friend than i am a partner got it i think i am i can but i think there's like such a big difference between being someone's like friend and being someone's for sure like the other emotions that come involved a like lot. get the best of me yeah like i can be not logical like i feel like i'm a very like logical grounded person but i when other feelings come involved, I'm not logical. I'm not grounded. I, I'm extreme. But You're talking about love. Yeah, yeah. But also, I think it is with me with love, not necessarily in a relationship that like an intimate relationship, but love in general, like, like how I am with my mom. Like I can be like spiteful or I can be aggressive or like, yeah, but it's just and it sounds shitty. It sounds so shitty because she does the most for me and has done the most for me. Yeah. But like. Yeah, sometimes like I just get I have a short fuse or whatever it may be with my mom, but with my best friend or whatever, I have the most amount of patience. It's And it shouldn't be like that. I should have the most amount of patience for my mom. Do you think it's just what because of the level of love? It's like, is it? I maybe, don't know. Is it, maybe it's the level of love or maybe it's just you get comfortable with someone and you think that however you are, or whatever you say is OK, because there's unconditional love both ways have you have you have you shifted that part of you like because like realizing it's obviously an important part of it, but have you shifted that at all in your relationship with your mom work in progress yeah work. i wish your mom was here right now to tell to give she's us that so answer. sweet she's very sweet she's so freaking nice like the whole time growing up my dad passed away like what 17 years ago not once did she go on another date with man that's fucking like loyalty to the max yeah that's crazy Damn, it's in your blood. You're loyal. You're yeah. a real one. Not a lot of real ones out there. Not a lot. No, she's like she's the type of mom that like we have a car, two car garage, and she lets my brother and I park in the garage when she's a six year old woman and she'll park across the street and walk because she wants to make sure my brother and I got in safe. Yeah, she's sweet. You should probably do the same for her. Be like, no, you know what, mom, you're gonna park here. I try, but she's the type. She's like, no, she you're won't. the one that comes home like late from hanging out with your friends or whatever it may be. Like, you need to park in the garage. Yeah. You think you learn a lot from your mom? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Do you think that like that sort of, uh, I guess. I don't know, like the things that you've learned from her and just from the people in your life, do you think they've translated to the rest of your life in regards to like this, this the way you treat like people through you know, that you meet on social media or friends that you make? I think so. I genuinely try, like, anyone that I meet, I try to give 100%, 100% to, and it doesn't always pay off, but yeah. I try to always give 100%. I notice that about you. Always. Like, if it's I meet someone, I always, like, try to shake their hand. Like, if it's a fan or a follower or someone who knows me from social media, not a fan or a follower, just someone who knows me from social media. Yeah. Like, they're like, hey, can I get a picture? I try to be like, hey, like, what's your name? Like, Michael? Oh, I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. Like, I try to make conversation so yeah, it's I something it. meaningful for them. I see it. Not see just, like, first. a picture. I see it. So, it's interesting. I just I just find it so interesting. I, I just... God. Because some people... I don't know. Yeah. I wish there were, I don't know. I wish there were more people like you on social media. I do. Thanks. You're actually a good person for real. I and try I, to be. It's very rare. Cause I, like I said, I've done this for so many, so many years and I've met so many people, but like, it's just rare to find genuine good people. It's like, you seem to find more people who are like, seem to be just like, I don't want to say like evil yeah. and fucking conniving and like, yeah. you know, and I just wonder, I wonder overall, where does that come from? I guess it's your childhood. And I your, think the your credit mother. is like to my mom, and I, I genuinely think it's like how I grew up. Because I remember, remember what I would joke with you when when I first. Oh met my you god! About dude, it wasn't a joke to me. You'd be like, "You're gonna fuck me over." I know how this goes. People get money and they leave. Like, yeah, you're gonna fuck me over. Like, yeah. this money's is gonna just, change you. Money's gonna. Oh my god, that was your favorite saying. Yeah. And I was like, "Bitch, like I know money's not gonna change me." Now you know how, what money did change is I go to In and Out and I can afford to get the four by four and the fries rather than just the burger. It didn't change you. I am surprised. It didn't change me whatsoever. Like I can eat a little bit better now yeah <laughs> that's but that's sure. what i'm most surprised about because like that's that's so it's just so fucking rare no most people they get money and they're like i'm better and i'm different and no money has nothing to do with like anything else you can just afford nicer things or eat better or whatever it may be but it has no correlation to who you are if anything i think it's more valuable to have money and then be a good person because it shows that 
you have whatever the assets may be, but you're still like genuine and down to earth. Like that's what I try to do is when I see people, I want them to feel valued from that conversation. Have you, you've, I'm assuming obviously you've met. You're the same way. Money hasn't changed. Like, I feel like you're not materialistic. Like you, you've been driving the same car for 10 years. Yeah, well, yeah. Like we'll the see. LA things that you know, typical LA things. I feel like you also do not fit the stereotypical. Yeah, well, I just don't give a fuck about certain things. Yeah. Like, I I value more so like building things than I do like having things. Yeah. Like, having stuff. It's funny as I see here with this bracelet. <laughs> yeah. <what's, laughs> okay, no. if you don't value it, well, hand I it got, over. <laughs> I only got one bracelet. This is a this was a this was a pressure bracelet. Steve made me buy this bracelet because we were all, we were like on a. Uh, so you given a peer pressure. I did once. I feel like you're the type. And of all my other pressure. jewelry, all my other jewelry, like was pretty much a gift. Gift, yeah. So I'm not big into just buying things. And I mean, like, yeah, I've been driving the same truck since 2017, but I'm not trying to make this about me not buying things. I just, I, I just have so much more value in the idea of if I'm gonna spend my money towards something, it's gonna be building something, yeah. Instead of just like having stuff. Well, I think you've done that pretty well. Raw gear, zoo culture, zoo culture 2.0. Yeah, we're doing the little training studios. Uh, Origins dropping in the supplement company. Um, what is that what i've been seeing you tease that what yeah, is origins so, so i mean it's i've had a, i had a something company years ago and then i stopped for time because i was working with the boys on their on their products and then we stopped that uh partnership and so i was like okay i'm gonna do do my thing over again so it's basically i mean it's gonna be a full line how i envision it is um not just sports performance like not just like you know pre-workout pump stuff like all that kind of stuff the good stuff i also want a lot of anivar no, but natural anavar, not natural. <laughs> There's no such thing as natural. Anavar. No, but products that are um, health supplements, like all the stuff that I've taken over the years that have like really helped Fish me. Fish oils, omega three, ashwagandha. Yeah, yeah. For, for the most stuff like blends, stuff, stuff like that, yeah. that are just like things that I've really noticed through like getting my blood work done over all the years that like have actually really helped me see improvements in like my health markers and all that kind of stuff. So like being healthy along this whole way of like sometimes killing yourself. <laughs> Perfect. You know, for the Perfect. gains. Nice so, balance. Yeah. Killing yourself for the gains, but trying to like combat. So as many. basically it'll cater to people who do steroid usage so they can get the other things in. You want to get it all right. All balanced. Yeah. So you okay, want the perfect. health stuff solid and then you also want the crazy dope pre workouts. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm gonna build it like that. Just the stuff that that's I've dope. done over the years. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. The things that have proven to work for me were like, you know, before there were products that there are some companies out that do re- actually make really great products that I really like that prior to those even being there like i would go find these like extracts and ingredients and like put and them blend and, it together and make my own shit yeah. and it would taste like trash <laughs> but it's because <laughs> it, it wasn't works. it yeah. worked it was good so stuff that stuff that's really helped me over the years so the goal is to like make that that like a health supplement product line and and also sports performance was like you know the filthy pumps the the filthy pumps yeah the good stuff that's dope but it's it's that's the thing i just i i when i talk to you about this stuff i'm like you know, obviously it's so funny to me because like I'm talking to someone who's like one of my athletes on like my team, which is dope and we love you and you're yeah. great. But at the same time, like even when I first met you, like I said earlier, I, I still like you have the potential to build businesses of your own. But it seems like not necessarily you don't want to. Maybe you're like, are you afraid to? I think I'm just afraid to. I don't think I have a drive for it yet. And I'm not going to do something if I'm not necessary. Like, you have a drive for it, which is great. And that needs to be there for you to do something. Yeah. Well, I'm a psychopath. You are a psychopath. Yeah. But, like, right now I'm really enjoying how things are going. So you're not thinking about being a crazy person? Not yet. I'm already a crazy person. <laughs> I'm, like, low-key crazy. But, like, every... Every person's, every girl at least, just low-key crazy. You just got to choose, you know, no one's going to be perfect. Everyone's low-key crazy. Have you ever been with a girl that's not crazy? No. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Everyone's a little, that's what I'm saying, a little crazy. Well, yeah, everyone is a little crazy. Like, so then it's not crazy. It's normal. True. But there's different degrees there's of different crazy. There's different degrees of crazy. For sure. Yeah. I know a few different degrees. So let's talk about, let's talk about this dynamic, the girls and guys. And we got to talk about dating. Dating, okay. okay. Um, you know, the classic question, should a guy hit on a girl in the gym? I think that it's fine. I think Appropriate ha- timing. If there's appropriate timing, it's okay. You know why it's hard for, for me to ever hear answers to this question? I feel like there is only one answer. It's yes. 
because I only go to the gym. Yeah. So now I'm trying to think of my That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, that's my social hour. Where else are you going to see me? Yeah. Like, you might get lucky and see me at Chipotle after, but... <laughs> Yeah. Like, the gym's the only guaranteed two hours of the day that I'm out of the house. Yeah, and not with your cat at home. Yeah, so it's you got to make the move at the gym. So then, okay, it, that's obviously like, you know, there's certain timing, you said. There is. Like, okay, if you're stretching or if you're in between sets or, like, if she's just on her phone, she can probably in, probably engage in a minute conversation with you as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But don't be the kind of guy who's mid set and you're like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> you no, like, wait, don't do that. Stare at her while she's under doing squats. Yeah, no. The worst thing you can do is stare to the point that she thinks you're creepy and then you come up to her. She already has this idea that you're fucking creepy. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you've been staring at her <laughs> and she's like, what is this? What do you think about doing? those TikTok videos where like the girls like expose the guys for looking at them and they go super hard? Bro, all I'm saying is if guys had tripods standing up while they were doing RDLs, I'd be exposed too. I stare. Everyone stares, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think it even got popular for girls? I think, I, I mean, I know the answer. They just want to clout. But I think there is a difference between like, I think if someone's in your age group, it's more acceptable to sk- stare at the opposite sex. But if someone, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference. Yeah. Like for me, like if a 70 year old guy keeps staring as opposed to like a 25 year old guy, you know what I mean? Kinda. I have seen guys at the gym, and it's always older men taking pictures of me. Always. At my gym? No. No, no, no. Not at your gym. At commercial gyms. Okay. Oh, I feel, who the fuck is that no, guy? No, at your gym, I'm always like, it's okay, because Bradley's here. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Ain't <laughs> He'll no one handle doing it. That. Ain't no one doing that. No, you're always so... Like, I always... I value our friendship to the point that I know you have my back. Like, that one time that... I don't know, some dumbass kid from your gym posted a video and then in the comment section he like shitted on me whatever it may have been at the time yeah and then i sent you a screenshot and you were like um you were like we'll try to talk to him about it like that's not okay but like if he's like just not respectful or whatever like we'll kick him out yeah like you care about the people around you of course you know what i mean like that's of course i appreciate that's, it that's nice yeah. that's really nice like it's comforting to know that even me, I know if I like got myself in a shitty situation and I called you, like you'd be there to help, whether it was yeah. advice or like a hundred percent, like coming to like pick me up or giving me money, like whatever it may well, be. If it was from the airport, I don't know if I'd get you. No, I wouldn't pick up anyone from LAX. Yeah, no, I that's a different type. Anyone of else though? <laughs> that's a different type. Of but the, uh, that going through that loop, I'm like, hey, listen, no. get out that loop, I'll come get you. Yeah. Straight up. No, 100%. I wouldn't trust you driving in LA anyways. It's scary no, as No, no, I'll get you in LA, just you. not the airport. <sighs> Dude, I'm a great driver. Jacob can attest to that. Jacob knows you're a shitty driver. Jacob you knows so, I'm a great driver. Yo, you drive that, Um, he drives a Ford Raptor. He drives the Ford Raptor like he has a GT3 RS or something. <laughs> That's actually so accurate. That's actually so accurate. Like, he does not drive that thing like it's a truck. Kevin's always like, dude, you need a sports car. Yeah, you. Do, but you wouldn't fit. I wouldn't. I can't do it. But you don't drive it like it's a truck. No, I drive it like it's, it's like a it's like a beam like a beamer or something. Yeah, like you think that thing will fit in any slot you pause. Pause. <laughs> yeah. But no, but seriously. Ugh. It's a talent. It's a talent of mine. Do so you have, so what's the most uh you're talking about guys and like fucking, you know, weird interactions, older guys at commercial gyms. What's the weirdest interaction you've had since you've like been on social media? I mean, I don't know many weird. I always think it's so awkward when people come up to you and ask you to follow them back. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. They're like, yo, hit me back with a follow? Yeah, because. You're like, nah, I'm too important. That's not the way I see it whatsoever. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. No, nah, for me, I'm it's like the you. people I. Like, I use Instagram as another way of, like, texting, like, connections. Like, I'll follow people. Like, whether it's, like, business... Great. Now I sound like a fucking douchebag. No, no, you don't. And you that's don't. not how I meant it. The reality is this. Like, I've probably been asked by, like, 500, maybe to 2,000 different people to follow them back. Not just in person, but, like, online. And it's, like, you follow everyone back. It's, like, you wouldn't see all the other shit that you're, like... No, that's what I'm... Like, I'm on there to see, like, what I need to see or, like, connect with people that I need to, like talk to benefit from yeah no b- not benefit <laughs> from holy shit with you. but i send dms um, all the time back i'm like if you use code sarah like send me a screenshot i love I, trolling you dude yo, just I, funny so. you're a good person you're not a shitty person you are literally one of the few that's like just solid you are i just troll you because like because you are so solid i troll you i'm but i'm kidding I'm <laughs> i know joking. i know you're I'm, not you're like actually a good fucking person and it's rare that's why like, that's why i like you the most i think 
Thank you. You're a good human, and you deserve all your success. And I'm fucking proud of you. I mean that. Stop. You're I really make you mean cry. That. Not trying to make you cry. You you really and you and you work hard. You care about the people around you. You care about the people who support you. It's very clear, and that's why I think you keep having more and more success. I know that's why. Thank you. Like even like you know how you know there's a time it's like your pot you blew up and then it slows down and like even right now it's like you're hell, you're blown up again. I think you continue to get moments like that because like you keep actually doing good. You keep actually putting good out. Yeah. Versus like you blow up and you're like I'm better than everyone. It's like eventually the shit just whether it's outwardly happening online like there's some something that starts to just kind of pull you down. And you know I think what it is is I've been to so many of these LA events and I see how. Regardless, I think it's usually girls that are meaner, but girls are meaner to a girl than guys. I mean, whatever, underlying intentions, whatever it may be. But I'm saying right. girls are usually meaner, especially when they have a following. And I've seen this firsthand and I think I'm just like, I never want to be like that or portray myself like that. Yeah. But I see girls and they like, I don't know if it's gotten to their head or they were just like that before they got a following too. Oh man. I've seen girls just completely Holy. do a fucking complete turn. And it just sounds like obviously people are just different. What advice do you give to someone who like wants to be successful in this industry and is afraid to kind of do it? Cause it's not like you were afraid to do it in the beginning. I was afraid to do it in the beginning, Yeah. but you just, you cannot overthink it and you just have, you have to post it. You, like you have to, and this is going to be ironic cause I just said, I don't like taking risks, but you yeah. have to take the risks in order to be successful sometimes. But also like the gym helped me find my self-worth for someone else. It might be like beauty or it might be lifestyle clothes or whatever, like your niche. Maybe it might be cars, like something that you're just passionate about. If you do it, it will help you like find your own self-worth and happiness in the dude. I'm really in the process. You're right. But I'm willing to bet that the gym will help everyone. everyone I agree. But maybe I just I'm didn't... biased. But I really think that no matter what the fuck you want to do in your life, the gym will literally make you better at it. I think to some extent it will because it shows discipline. Getting up, going to the gym, eating somewhat correctly, you know, like hitting your nutrients, whatever it may be. I think it's all discipline. Yeah. When you prove to yourself you, you're capable of doing something that that's physical, then you could see a result. And then at the same time, it just makes your life better because of your mental acuity. Yeah. It makes you sharper. It makes no, 100%. you makes you more clear. So Jim is everything. What's going on? I'm here? sorry. <laughs> is it his beard? His mustache? No, his mustache was just. I'm sorry, his mustache. But no, I agree 100. percent It does. It translates to everything else in your life. Okay, be what? honest. Like, can you just be honest? Like, we're all on, we're all curious. We're all curious. Yeah, go ahead. Like, have you ever kissed Steve? No, that is a very weird question. I just feel like there's something else there. Because he's my friend. Okay, you don't have to be so defensive. No, I'm not defensive. I'm saying because like, he's a friend. No, like yesterday, yesterday, we were all just hanging out at the gym, right? Uh -huh, Jacob, me, you, Faith, we were all just chilling. Uh -huh. And then like you were just like kind of working out, sure. And then like Steve pulls up and you're like, oh, And shit. Kyle. Yeah, and Kyle. Right, yeah. okay. And then you're like, oh my God, I have to get a pump. Like they're here. Like you didn't say that out loud, but like your actions. So like you were well, trying to they like were look here because I was gonna work out. Like you were trying to like, like we were gonna know, work like, out. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the logistics like, behind when it. When you I'm and Faith just... were there, it was like, eh, I don't really need a pump. We're not really training. Like they're gonna bullshit and film stuff. No, that's exactly like with the girls. You're like, eh, it doesn't matter. Men walk in. Well, there there are people I was training with. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. like I didn't. It was no, like, you didn't know they were gonna come. You didn't know. I didn't know Kyle was gonna come. I knew Steve was coming. Kyle was a surprise. <laughs> Steve was coming. <laughs> Dude, you are, you're sick, dude. Whatever. I'm just, I was just, it was just a question. I know they were curious too. Who, them or they? These two? Them or they? <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. I mean them or they, the people watching. The people watching. I don't think they're curious about that. I think they're curious about your uh, preference. Dude, I know, I know a lot of people do think that I'm like bi or gay, but I, I am straight. <laughs> I just, you, I just. I'm a little assertive and I dress kind of What did you say, Jacob? What he what did he say? Growing up though, I always I, I always people always thought I was like a tomboy. You and are it, kind of a tomboy. And it would hurt my feelings when they would say it. That hurts then. your feelings? Yeah, at the time it would hurt my feelings. Not now though. Because you are now. kind of a no, tomboy. No, now I'm like totally It's yes, dope, I am. Yeah. I am. But I'm saying at the time I'd be like, 
I thought it had some underlying meaning. Like you, oh, wow, well, it's who gives a fuck. Now you're totally, you're like a bro, honestly. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Just, dude, awkward moments with you are great. Let's talk about dogs and cats now, because you mean okay, obviously sound. cats. So like, okay. like no, All like right. dude, I walk in your pa- your dogs ruin my fit. I think my raw gear sweatshirt, I gotta throw away I'm now. Be These with pants, you, I think, slobber. I think that's how the podcast ends, because like we, I don't even think we can continue to talk. Why? Because you like cats more than dogs. They're cats don't mad. do that. Cats don't do that. Yeah, cats also don't do anything except avoid you. That's totally not true. I know why you like cats. Why? Because I'm be- pussy. <laughs> not because you're a pussy now because you don't have to really take care of them that's probably true they're low yes. that's low effort they're low effort yeah wow they're that's low sad effort. okay so this is how we're ending this okay. okay how long do you think it's going to take before you get two million on ig because the first million is the hardest it is yeah fuck yeah first million is the hardest that's just like in that's like making money and everything it's always the hardest first is always the hardest and then it's easier well, it took me, I think, like 14, 15 months to hit him. So maybe another year, 12 months. You think you do another one in a year? Well, you just said it's easier. I think And sooner. now you're being judgment. I'm really? not making judgment. I'm just asking you. Yeah. I think sooner. What about YouTube? Are you going to take YouTube serious? I've been trying to take YouTube serious since day one. I've been taking YouTube serious. I love YouTube. Boost my algorithm. But like, <laughs> what'd you say? Boost my algorithm. <laughs> boost my, please, please boost the algo. Uh, comment for the algorithm, please. Um, yeah, guys. And subscribe to this channel. Finally, anyway. like he had me on a podcast for so long. Like he only has like famous people and stuff, but he decided like it's okay. We'll have Sarah on. No, I think you it's know we need a time. filler. We need a filler video. We'll have Sarah Safari on. He's got a million followers in fucking a year, dude. That's that's impressive. And you're a good person. That's even more impressive. You're Thanks. not a shithead. Are we gonna throw a party? We're not throwing a party. We're not throwing a party for a million. No. Yeah, no. We could throw a party at the gym. That's what I'm saying. A party at the gym. Like right now? Like what are you doing after this? I was going to go work out. Oh shit, me too. See, see Do you want to train? You want to work out together? I got Get legs, some... Loki. Oh shit. Yeah, no, I... Uh, Your legs hurt, I have huh? to go somewhere else. I figured. You don't No, I'm down to hit legs, actually. But only okay. if we deadlift. I'm not wearing the best shoes. Take them off. Fuck. Whatever. Yeah. Those shoes are dope, though. You like them? Yes. But we're going to deadlift today. Okay. We'll work out. Um, okay. Wait. Go ahead. I don't want this to be over. This is fun. Okay. Let me pee first then. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about specifically? Yeah. I have a question for you. All right. If you guys want to send your questions for audiences, for audience questions, for you guys to ask us and I'll ask the guests, askrawtalk at gmail.com. Send us your questions. But we don't have those right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> We're it's gonna okay. Get I those. have questions for you. You have questions, but if you guys want your questions answered by the next guest, send the questions there and we'll answer them. Go ahead. Okay. Do you see yourself ever getting married? Wow. That's a good one. Um, getting married. Probably not like uh married like in the traditional sense, but like having a partner and like creating Why? a partnership. Why can you not commit? No, I can commit. I just don't like the idea of signing, hey, I'm getting married to the government. Okay. I want to be in a partnership. I want to like be married without like the Hey, we're, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I want that sort of okay. relationship. Okay. Would you make her sign a prenup? Oh, this is, you know that I would. We've had this, this, yeah. uh, this stupid ass video. Yo, I'd viral. probably make him make sign one too. Yeah. I mean, it's so like, I don't blame you. It's like, just I can like, see where you're coming from. Yeah. Now, now you started making and money. Now I get see. It. At yeah, the time yeah. I didn't, you know, I just started. <laughs> yeah. Now you got some money. You're like, wait a sec. It took some time to get this shit. But that's what it comes down to. It's just like. You know, it's just a funny thing, you know. It is funny. I was just. You just got to. Uh, yeah. hundred percent. They'd have to sign it. Because if someone spend their whole life to work on something, like not just the time you met when you met someone, but like all the years leading up to that. It's like you, you know, that person obviously can be very, very important, but like they also weren't there for them to be like, yo, we got married. Let's say fucking three years later. They're like, yo, I'm out. And but but, you know, half your shit's now mine forever. True. I see. It's I just kind of like, whoa, wait a sec. Okay, do you want kids? And if so, how Absolutely. many? I'd love two kids, but I always wanted two kids, but now I kind of want three kids. Oh. Yeah. That number's going up. It's like, We're, as you yeah, get older, yo. like, I want like a whole fucking... Someone like, wife this man. I want a fucking football team or something. Fo- oh. Four kids. Five kids. Have you seen the... Th- <laughs> Have you seen the video that like 
um, someone asks a guy, like, hey, would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? And then the, the guy's like, oh, a thought daughter. And then he's like, what if you come home and, like, the whole football team's, like, running a train on her? And the guy's like, shit, I'd join it. Bro, what the fuck? Do you know what many I'm talking about? That is terrible. No, dude. No. <laughs> no. Holy shit. What are you talking about? No, there's a video. I'll yeah, find no, it. Yeah, maybe don't pull that up. Listen, ask me that question, though. Would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? 100% a gay son. Yeah. Gay son. Easy. That's yeah. such an easy. That's a, it is a no-brainer. I think because it's like, be, it's because I'm a dude. I'm like, oh, it's like, he's a dude. Like, you know, I just feel like he'll, he's going to be able to just deal with the bullshit versus like being a thought daughter. is like, you're going to get ran through and just like dealt with all this, sh- these shitty hands and deal with all that shit and like all the shit that comes along with it. And yeah, I feel like, I don't know. No, I agree. Yeah, I would too. It's interesting coming from you. Actually, it makes sense coming from you. I think, yeah, I think it makes, because I don't want, I don't know, because then if, I don't know. (laughs) Go ahead, go ahead, what? No, like, then, like, I feel like if you're, like, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but if you're, like, that much of a thought, then you got no self-respect or, like, self-worth. Yeah. I just find that so interesting. You're just, I've said this a few times in this podcast, but, like, how different you are from, like like, a lot of girls that I know. And you know what's funny is I started working out and posting content. I was like, you know what? Maybe it will motivate girls to get into the gym. And they won't think like, oh, it's like gross to get big or whatever. I'm not even that big, but I'm well, saying. Well, that's getting so popular. Girls who work out is like such a popular thing. Yeah, but my audience is 10% females. Them dudes love you. How come you don't post more like uh, exercise tutorial type videos? Because I just, I go with it. <laughs> I don't even. You don't want to. Like, You're I never like, going to be like, yo, here's this workout? No, because I'm Because that would get you more girls. Yeah, but I feel like I'm also not a... What am I going to say? Five workouts to get your ass fat? Look at my ass. It's yeah, flat. maybe they want to know how to get <laughs> fucking... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, how can I, like, how can I get up there and be like, hey, But girls. you have, like, good ab, maybe be like ab routine type shit or, like, pull-ups. You know, like, yeah. cause some, like, a lot of girls now, it's like forever the lower body was like, that's all every single, every girl wanted. Now, like, girls kind of want a little bit of both. Yeah. The, f- the lower body forever, I feel yeah. like. But now girls are more like, oh, I want some like shaped, shapely arms and a nice back. Yeah. You could give some routines. You you would build your audience that way for sure. Yeah. You should think about it. Yeah. Take my advice. Trust. Okay. Because you would, I think you could crush that. And you have a good personality where like. I can make it kind of like banter, quirky, funny. No. Yeah, I didn't no. think so. No, not. You didn't, you didn't have me going there on that one. Yeah. That's a, that's a fake plan. So like, do you do drugs? Do I do drugs? Yes. What drugs? Well, besides steroids, I rather call them plants Oh my or medicine. I rather call them herbs, herbs, (laughs) mushrooms. I don't do uh, synthetic drugs. Mm. Yeah. Just drugs from the, from the earth that I take. Are steroids from the earth? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. They're not from the earth. They're synthesized. Uh, oh. Yeah. That's what I meant by like non. That's you know. why you're natty. I am a natural. Natural capper. No, no, I'm a natural at making content. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you are. What do you think about Andrew Tate getting out? Being being on a like hard, Yo, hard I don't take follow, there. I don't follow Andrew Tate, but what I can say about him is that he definitely knew how to monopolize on social media. Oh, yeah. Like, businessman, amazing. I just don't know much about it. Like, really? Yeah, I swear, I don't. Like, yesterday, someone was saying, I was with my friends for a birthday party, and someone was saying, like, oh, like, Andrew Tate got out. And I was like, I don't even really know he was. That's lit. Your friends are probably cool. I, I didn't really even know he was locked up. <laughs> he was in fucking, he was, yeah, he was locked up for a minute. That's your homie. Like, what? how do you feel about it? What's your boy? I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Yeah, you're excited to rekindle your relationship with him? He's dope. I, I messaged him. And he said, congrats on getting out? Is I that said, what one says to another one? No, I said, are you really out? And he said, yeah, G. And then I said, huge. Yeah, he can be the top G while you're the bottom G. <laughs> you guys okay, I don't know why you had to go there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why you did that. You're just weird for that. That was super weird. Sorry, that was really weird. Thank you for doing that and just really fucking this up. 
but like that's so awkward like yo congrats on getting out <laughs> you beat well i just no because you know you see the whole thing was like you just see all the the pics you see the highlights yeah. you see like the fucking tmz and i was just like yo is this guy actually out or is it just like bullshit yeah so i hope i i just i don't know it's like i think it's probably a weird situation where like you can't you can't say much yeah do you do you see yourself living here for the rest of your life well that's a good question uh in this house specifically house area yeah i love uh, this house if you know. if you ever want to sell this house like hit me up yeah I, like, I mean i can't afford it but maybe i, one day. I don't know if i would live I don't know. To be honest, I I actually think about like living outside of the country sometimes. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You're full of shit. Not full of shit. I know you're full of shit. I'm not full of shit. No, you're overthinking ass. Like, how are you gonna manage your brands and your gyms? I can, I can do that from outside of the country. No, you can't. Yes, you I love can. the to hardest say that. thing would be the hardest thing would be doing the podcast. I'd have to travel to get a bunch of podcasts done here before I went somewhere else. No, you act like like what you have to do for zoo culture isn't hands on. It's pretty hands on. Yeah, but eventually it won't be. And it's kind of, it's not, it, it is because like I have to, I have to make sure certain things happen, but like I can put someone in place to make sure that it happens as well too. I said, how well does that usually go? Well, uh, it never goes as good as like you doing you it, do right? It. You're never, you will not find someone else that will give you the same effort that you would give it. Yeah, of course not. But that's, that's kind of a part of like success. You have to be able to balance as much as possible. Yeah. Like. You know, I was talking about this with with Kyle uh, on the pod that we did was you you like master something and then kind of like give it to someone else to try to do what you have to kind of let go of the fact that it's never going to be the same as the way you did it. But you want you want to find someone as close as possible to the way that you did it, because yeah. like right now, for example, we're looking at spots in Vegas to open a gym. Really? Yeah. Like a like a super gym with like a bunch more shit. We'll, we'll talk about it more in the future. But um, with this gym. I know that I can't be there and here at the same time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you find someone that, that like will care about it enough, or if you can incentivize someone enough to care about it as much as they can, then like, that's how you do it. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's no other way to like really scale something. You can't be everywhere at one time. Yeah. You can't do everything. That'd be insane in Vegas. I yeah. love Vegas. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. It'd be like a 20, 22,000 square foot spot. So this one over here is like 10. We like double. Double that? Yeah, we build like uh, like actual like bathrooms and amenities and all that kind of shit. That'd be, be insane it's though. Gonna be it's crazy. gonna be insane. And yeah. I feel like building the second one now you got more. Ten thing. times easy. Yeah, it'll be so much easier. There'll be new like regulations and stuff because it's in Las Vegas, but you'll mm. be good. Well, there's no, there's a lot less actually. A lot less. It's everything is cheaper. Everything is like the barriers easier. Everything's yeah. easier. It's way better. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's like you probably build something. Probably for half the cost, like even just like rent wise, employee wise, everything yeah. and get probably the same amount out of it. Yeah. Which is insane. It's a, it's a good opportunity. I'm excited about because excited I feel like it. people go to Vegas like as a tourist spot. And like when I went there, I was like, I need to find a gym. And then I was like, oh, like Dragon Slayer looks cool. But yeah. then people go there and they'll be like, oh, my God, Bradley Martin's gym. Well, yeah, that's why. So open these opening these gyms in any sort of like destination city always as well. Like because yeah. forever since Zoo Culture has been open. I mean, every time I'm there is like someone from. Norway, Japan, fucking Antarctica, Australia. Yeah. Like people come from all over the world because they're going to L.A. And then they're also a fan of like the content. So they're like, oh, I want to check this out. Yep. So Vegas is another place like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami would be another place like that. My, yeah, but Miami want, is very, very hard to find spaces. If you want to find girls with BBLs. That's a whole nother thing. That's yeah, it's not I'm not a fan. Really not a fan. But I, I'm really looking forward to, to doing this Vegas spot for sure. Yeah, that'll be insane. So but, but back to the point about like, yeah, it not it's not going to be the same as like you would do something. Right. Yeah. But you have to let go of that. Otherwise, you can't grow. You can't scale things. But I feel like for you, that's a little hard to let go of because I feel like you like to be in control. Like you're a micro. Like you micromanage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way, though. I can't fully ever let go. I have to watch them do it until they can prove to me they can do well, it. Well, it's fucked up because I've actually been in situations where I've not micromanaged as much where I let people manage more. I've actually found myself in really bad situations that I had to clean up because someone just like completely flopped important tasks. Yeah. Like I've been there. So, yeah. um, but you know, it's just a matter of like, again, over time, finding the right people to put into the right places and understanding that like the first person or the second person may not always be the right person and yeah. just kind of like continuing to move through it. But that's all a challenge. So, yeah. Maybe just making content and just working for me might be easier. 
That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what I'm, saying. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think you. I think you should do more shit because you're 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 talented. You're smart. You know, you got a lot more than that. Maybe not right now though. But maybe someone will ha- already have something built, and they'll be like, "Yo, Sarah, like you're really smart. I'll give you fifty percent equity." Fifty <laughs> percent already built. Fifty percent. Yeah, you know, I and know. I have you know what I have to offer. I have my knowledge to offer. That's normally worth a lot less equity, but you know. Yo, thirty-five percent's good too. <laughs> You're fucking crazy. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, I got to get to the gym. Uh, yeah, I have to go work out. Yeah, I got to train. It's been a pleasure. It's been wonderful, and I'm proud thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me on here and, you know, always, always supporting me and telling me what's right to do and what's not right to do and, like, bullshit. Like, even, like, you, I remember you would be like, Sarah, like, you have to make an LLC. Like, shit like that. Like, it's yeah. just, like, a simple conversation, but it benefits way more than just you saying a sentence or two, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You deserve it. You're a good person. Thank you. So are you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So subscribe, yo. You have you have YouTube, you have Instagram, you got Snapchat. Yeah. You tired? I don't know why I'm yawning. I gotta crack open this gym weed. Yeah. Um, so what where else could they find you? That's it? Snapchat, Instagram, OnlyFans. You're funny. <laughs> I'm Stupid. kidding. Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. TikTok. You hate it, huh? I kind of hate it now, too, man. It's tough. It was dope, though, for a minute. It was dope for a minute. Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck That's it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also they can find you at the gym. Yeah, you can find me at Zoo Culture. You're pull up there. anytime. You're always there. I'm always there. I wish Come my haters out. would pull up on me, man. You wish what? My haters would pull up. No, no one's pulling up on you. I would love for them to pull up. Pull up on me. We'll take some pictures. We'll have some nice talks. We'll go to lunch. You're you going to go to lunch with them? You can have my social security number. <laughs> Yo, I was... Bu- no, sit back down. You went to lunch yesterday and you did not take me. Yo, really? Really? Just because I'm right, you're going to walk out. <sighs> Bye, guys. Love you.